We're here today to record some teaching material on how to actually put on and take off personal protective equipment, don and doff as they call it, PPE. This is of course extremely important nowadays. Uh, it's extremely important normally, but now this has been really emphasized by the fact that we've got a COVID-19 pandemic going on around the world, which is spread by droplet and contact possibly aerosol in some procedures. So it's essential that as clinicians, nurse, doctor, paramedic, we're completely aware of how we protect both ourselves, our colleagues and our patients. So we need to protect ourselves. So we're a valuable and critical workforce at the moment. Yeah. Um, we're coming up against a threat um, to our own personal safety. Yeah. Um, we know about you know, the, the overseas travel and the direct contacts, but community transmission is something that's unknown as well. Um, so we have advice from the CEC and we certainly have advice from our unions um, and, you know, normal common sense as well. Mm. means that we need to protect ourselves to make sure that we're available yep. in the coming months as we face this pandemic. Coronavirus is a droplet type um, virus at the moment. That's mm. what's been identified. There are aerosolizing procedures that we will talk about shortly, yeah. um, but typically it's a droplet. So um, that's why we put the surgical face masks on the patients so mm. that they can not, well, hopefully that will capture the droplets coming out from the mm. patient, mm. Um, but also protect the staff as well um, from receiving any of those droplets as well. We also okay. need to talk about spacing. So 1.5 meters is a general uh, typical droplet spread yep. um, which is why that's what social distancing are 1.5 okay. um, but also our typical bed spaces are sort of around 1.5 as well. What we're going to do this morning is uh, Catherine is going to teach me how to uh, put PPE on or don PPE in the right way to make sure that we're both adherent to the appropriate guidelines and that we are safe when we do it. We'll go through various levels of PPE, each of which we'll explain as we go through, and uh, we'll talk about it a little bit afterwards as well. Okay, so I'll start by doing a demonstration, okay. and then I'll get you to teach it back to me. Okay, fantastic. Okay. I, I will point out, actually, that um, we have made sure that we are the right distance apart, I think. One kangaroo or two arms, I'm told, is what we're meant to be apart, one and a half metres or so, uh, to maintain our uh, protection as well. So, um, anything else I've got to do before we get ready to go? Uh, so ideally we need to be making sure that we're bare below the elbows, um, okay. so uh, if we can I make sure that everything's off somewhere and else. really it's a decision about um, having that as a commitment to your normal practice now yeah. um, to make sure that hand hygiene is maintained, you've got a ring on as well. I have, unfortunately that one doesn't come off. <laughs> okay. So. okay, so the first step um, is to perform hand hygiene, so you can, using an alcohol based hand rub. Um, this is a bit short supply at the moment, so I'm just going to mock doing that. Um, but it really is doing a good quality hand wash or hand rub um, before you start any procedure. So it's about 20 seconds until that alcohol based hand rub is dry and then you'll proceed. So the first thing that you're going to do then is to put on a gown. So here we have the thumbs up gown. Other institutions will have different gowns. And why is it called a thumbs up gown? Am I being stupid? Or... Oh, because the thumbs come out. Okay. Uh, so then the next step is to pop on a mask. So we're going to start using the surgical face mask. Okay. So these ones luckily go over the ears. Otherwise, you do have the surgical tie ones. To make sure you do a fit check, so the, they recommend not to pinch around the nose, but rather to pinch or oh, to push against the cheeks. Okay. Okay, you're not going to get a proper fit with these ones. Um, the importance of these surgical face masks is that it's about protecting the people from the person who's wearing it. So right. it stops the droplets from coming through. Okay, so from there, um, we're going to go to eyewear. So for people who don't wear glasses, mm. um, eye shields are pretty good. Um, mm. The goggles. People who wear glasses might find it easier to wear the face shield. Okay. Um, there is a slightly different procedure um, in the doffing process, and I can run through both of those. Okay. So I'll just pop those on. And then the last step is gloves. Okay, 
So that's completely donned um, okay. for general patient contact, non-aerosolising okay. procedures. So the doffing process now, you need to consider what is the dirtiest part of what I'm wearing right now, and that's always going to be your gloves. Okay. So the first, first thing that comes off is your gloves. So inside out, and then trying not to touch the surface, and that will go straight into the bin, which I'll just pop on the floor. Mm -hmm. The CDC recommends that you only clean your hands between steps if you're contaminated. We're just going to presume that we contaminate ourselves, and so we're going to clean our hands between each step of nothing. Okay. Remembering that this part of the thumbs up gown has been underneath my gloves, so it's clean and again until it's dry. So the next thing that comes off is the goggles. So reaching as far back as possible behind the ear, yep. pushing forward, and then those will go into the bin or into the, uh, to be cleaned and reused, depending on your local processes. And yep. then we're going to clean our hands again. Mm -hmm. So we're cleaning our hands after each step, yeah, after the gloves, after the goggles. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, so remembering most of this is done in the patient's clinical care environment still, so you're okay. in the dirty area still yep. until you're going to step out after this. So now the next last step in the clinical care environment is to remove the gown. So reaching as far back as possible, I'm going to tear these okay. and try and fold it forward. Right, okay. So we try so not to, we try to recommend a lot of people will um, tie double tie around the front. Yeah. Try not to do that at the moment because it makes it a bit difficult to um, to remove. Okay. So what and we're doing basically is folding the outside inside. Yeah, the outside the inside. So the clean, which is against you, yeah. is now on the outside of the. Cool. Okay. And then more hands. They'll go into the bin and then we clean our hands. Fantastic. Okay. And then, so at this point, we're still in the patient's clinical care environment. So now we need to step out of the patient's room yep. and we need to remove the, the mask. So from again, from as far back as possible and push forward, yep. we really want to avoid any flick or turn right. um, or like that, yep. okay? okay? So it really has to be a very controlled maneuver yep. that comes out and forward and then that goes straight into the bin. Okay. And then ideally at this stage, you'll go and you'll wash your hands um, right. at the sink. Okay. Not only will you be a bit gammy from yeah. all of the alcohol-based mm. hand rubs, but it, you need to use soap and water. Yeah. If there's no sink in your immediate um, capacity or yeah. you know environment, yeah. then you'll hand gel again on the way to the sink. Okay. Um, one thing I did want to ask is about the ma the mask that you tie. Yeah. So of course they're a bit harder to take yeah. off. How are you meant to actually get rid of the ones with the tie? So really, it is still grabbing from as far back as possible and yeah. breaking so them. Breaking the ties. Break the tie okay. at the back and then still push forward. So the first thing I would have done is I would be going to the sink to wash my hands, or if this is what I had, I would be doing appropriate hand hygiene. Yep. Um, I'd be doing that in a way that ensures that we're cleaning every part of our hands. Uh, so. yep, and I do completely understand that I've got a ring on, so it's not quite as good as it could be, but okay. Okay, so. next step. It's about making sure your layers are correct. Right. So you can put your mask on at this stage, okay. and then your goggles will go over your mask. If right. you put your gown on, your gloves go over your gown. Okay, so gown on first. Yep. So let me take that one. So, identify the mask. Just press that against the face so we get the best possible seal. Okay. Um, and then, because I'm wearing glasses, I'll probably put the face shield on next. Okay. And finally, I'll put on my gloves. Okay. I can see the problem with these face shields is that they steam up a little bit, don't they? Yeah. And a straight, uh, particularly for people who wear glasses, um, even just straight under the um, the face mask, the surgical face mask, even without the face shield, you'll start to fog up. Yeah. You almost need like the windscreen wipers on the inside. <laughs> so I'm now wearing gloves, gown, mask, and face shield over them. So I've got my sort of level one of PPE yep. on there. Okay. okay.
The first thing right. is to remove the dirtiest part. Oh, we'll remove the dirtiest things first. Okay. So I'm going to try not to catch the outside of those. Um, okay, then I should do some hand no, hygiene, shouldn't I? Yeah. Okay. And between each time, we're doing that same sort of You're hand doing hygiene. You're really thorough, yeah. Okay. It's about protecting yourself. This is about us protecting ourselves and each other. Um, so we always recommend that the doffing process is a buddy doff process. Um, right. And certainly the mask fit and donning process should just be a check me before I go into the area as okay. well. Okay, all right. So you recommend then that all this sort of stuff is done with a buddy to check. Yeah. Bit like when you when you're uh, scuba diving. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, clean my hands again. Then next thing would be my face shield. It will. So you need to come to from as far back from as possible back and push it and push forward. forward. So you, with my glasses. Yeah. So people need to just be very aware of what is where their equipment is. <laughs> For now. Um, yep. Okay. Okay. So next step is your next hand step hygiene. is more hand washing. Okay. Hand washing. I'm gonna do the same thing again. Good, okay. And there, okay. And then the next step would be my gown. Be, yeah. So I'm going to come from the back. I'm going to pull it forward and try and try to turn it inside out so that the clean part is outside. Let me guess, more hand washing. More oh, hand washing. Okay. It's what we've been trying to get doctors to do for years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we're very good at it. <laughs> okay, still in the patient area. Now I'm about to step outside yep. the patient area, so I might come back there and then I'm going to take the mask off. Once again, it's going to be take it and pull it forward yep. away from and then drop that into a bin as well. Yep. Wow. And now you'll either use alcohol based hand rubs or on the way to the sink. Right. Um, or you'll go directly to the sink. So actually as I leave the patient on the way to the sink, still doing some hand yeah. hygiene. Because what if someone runs leave. into you? You've just handled possibly one of the dirtiest parts yep. where, you know, we've got a vacuum. Yeah. Um, so we need to make sure that we're protecting ourselves and each other. Okay, excellent. Thank you for watching this teaching material on how to don and doff personal protective equipment. So we hope that you have found this interesting. We hope that you found it educational and more than anything else, we hope that you now feel a little bit more secure about the way that you protect yourself, your colleagues and your patients as you go about your daily job.